Four months is not a long time to change a mission. A lot of things happen on Apollo 8 that were, you know, unplanned. Since this was the uh, first flight on the Saturn V, first flight to the moon, uh, first of a lot of things, it was uh, a pretty risky flight. Sideways shaking was unbelievable. The vibration was so intense you couldn't see the instrument panel. And the thrust looks good. All engines, all sources show that the stage is burning perfectly. The third stage fires twice. First, the boost into orbit. The second burn takes the crew of Apollo 8 where no men have ever been. Deep space. There was no way that the Earth's gravity could hold us back any longer. So we were on our way. We could see the Earth, and we could actually see the Earth shrink. It was quite a sensation. Apollo 8 is shooting blindly for the moon. Computers calculate their trajectory. If the numbers are off by even a little, they'll either crash into the lunar surface or miss the moon completely and just keep going. This was one of the more exciting parts of the flight because we knew that if we lost radio communication when we were masked by the moon, when we were supposed to on the flight plan, we were exactly on trajectory. Uh, and at the exact millisecond we were supposed to lose the radio, we lost it. You stop to think, going 240,000 miles and then aiming for a point 60 miles above a surface, but I think we came out within a mile and a half of where we were supposed to be. For the first time in human history, men look upon the far side of the moon with their own eyes. They're just 70 miles away. Well, it was on, a, I don't know, sixth or seventh or eighth revolution we looked up. And that's when, when we came into sunlight, we were all totally amazed by the earth rise. A beautiful sight. It's tiny out there, it's inconsequential. It was ironic that we had uh, come to study the moon and was really discovering the Earth. And God bless all of you, all of you on the good Earth. It's still amazing. It's still The crew of Apollo 8 captured the world's attention. And as you heard, they are here today. Frank Borman served as commander, also a veteran of uh, Gemini 7 Space Orbital Rendezvous with Gemini 6, that was in 1965. James Lovell served as command module pilot and navigator. At one time, Lovell held the record for the time in space. And William Anders served as the lunar module pilot. He took the famous photograph of the Earth rising over the moon's horizon. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. We're delighted to have you here. And why don't you greet him as well? That's great. That's our museum audience, and I would like the studio audience to be prepared to ask questions as we go throughout this program. I want to hear your questions as well. I have a bunch of them here that I've been, since I've been doing some research, and gentlemen, thank you very much. Frank, let me start with you, if I may. In September, I, if, if my research is correct, it was in September of 1968.